actionfigureresource.com. Yesterday's Toys, Today's Treasures. Mattel, a case study for action figure resource. One of the biggest toy manufacturers in the world, up there with Hasbro, Mattel were first formed in 1945 by Harold Matson and Elliot Handler. They worked out of a garage in Southern California and sold picture frames and doll's house furniture made from scraps of picture frames. The latter proved more successful, so they focused on toys. In 1955, by advertising their products via Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse Club on TV, Mattel tapped into a brand new way to reach their core market. One day a few weeks ago, I looked all over the house for Billy. Of course, I found out later that my son was in darkest Africa. Billy was hunting elephants with his trusty Mattel toy burp gun. That's the only fully automatic cap gun in the world, you know. Real safe. Fires one shot or in bursts. He never misses with that burp gun. And it's so simple to play with. The safety catch keeps it from firing while Billy winds it. Then he closes the breech and checks his ammunition. There's plenty of room for spare caps in the magazine. He's off again, hunting tigers in India. But don't worry. The burp gun's so safe, it's got the parent's seal of approval. Only $4 wherever toys are sold. You can tell it's Mattel. It's swell. In 1959, Ruth Handler, wife of Elliot, noted that their daughter Barbara had a fascination with paper dolls. She suggested that Mattel produce a three-dimensional version in plastic with which little girls could play out their dreams of having a pink house and a pool and a car and lots of clothes. From this, the phenomenally popular industry changer, Barbie, was born. In 1961, Barbie got a non-threatening boyfriend named after the brother of young Barbara Handler, Ken. They have been going steady for, to date, 52 years. They were also joined by Midge and Skipper, Barbie's new friend and sister. Midge would later become pregnant to teach little girls about reproduction. In 1968, Mattel rolled out the Hot Wheels. This line of die-cast, extremely detailed miniature cars proved again exceptionally popular and a long-lasting line, surpassing Matchbox and Corgi in worldwide sales over time. Mattel bought Corgi in 1989, Matchbox sold their brand to Tyco in 1992, and Tyco were bought up by Mattel in 1997, so this is a perfect example of how smaller toy companies tend to be absorbed by their competition. Hot Wheels are characteristically brightly coloured with metallic paint, frequently in hot rod models and designed for fast racing. A line of plastic racing track was sold alongside the cars to accentuate their speedy designs. Apparently placed front to rear, all Hot Wheels cars produced since 1968 would form a ring around the planet Earth four times. Eight cars are sold per second, three tracks a minute, 230 play sets an hour. That same year of 1968, the first of Barbie's ethnic friends emerged. There was Christy, who was black, followed 20 years later in 1988 by Teresa, who was Latino, and in 1990, Kira, who was Asian. In 1972, the company restructured to form Mattel Incorporated, one large company with seven subsidiaries. In 1979, with the movement of home entertainment systems bringing arcade realism to the living room at last, Mattel released the Intellivision. Soon, the John Geyer family will be using their TV to help compute their federal income tax, learn French, improve math skills, and quarterback an NFL team. Here comes on scrimmage. Introducing Intellivision, the new home video system from Mattel Electronics. Two components, each sold separately. Start with the master component. Available now for super games like NFL football. To pass. Go for it, Dad. Caught it. And for learning fun from the electric company. Now this one's a little tougher. I got it. And when you add the keyboard component available this summer, in television can change your family's life. It simplifies financial planning. Even custom designs a Jack LaLanne exercise One, program for you. One, two, Play it dryer. One. There is an entire library of Intellivision programs designed to grow right along with your family's interests. Discover Intellivision. It can change your family's life. 
It did well for the company, shifting 3 million units, but within 4 years of bandwagon jumping, which saw the ColecoVision, the Coleco Gemini, the Atari 2600 and 5200, the Bally Astrocade, the Emerson Arcadia 2001, and the Fairchild Channel F System 2, and the Magnavox Odyssey, all vying for the public's attention, there was a video game market crash. By the end, as Mattel Electronics closed their doors, they had accrued over $394 million in losses. After this, the market recovered, and Nintendo started doing extremely well in the USA with its Nintendo Entertainment System. They made a deal with Mattel to have them manufacture and distribute the NES in Europe. However, it would seem that after their defeat on the Intellivision, Mattel's heart wasn't in it. And the NES was outsold considerably in the PAL territories by the cheaper Sega Master System. Nintendo have gone on record in later years as considering this partnership a mistake. Fortunately, while their short foray into console manufacture ended dismally, their toy division was doing gangbusters. In 1982, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe hit shelves with a thunderous punch. The idea exemplified in Hasbro's later Transformers and My Little Pony lines was to find a boy's toy with the same killer appeal of Barbie. Motu enjoyed series after series of figures with the tie-in Filmation cartoon. The figures were insanely popular, generating $400 million in sales in 1985. The simple brilliance involved mass-producing a variety of colourful characters introduced through the cartoon and made with a relatively small variety of legs, arms, torsos, weapons and armour, recoloured, mixed and matched with fun action features to make each hero and villain distinct and desirable. Form of evil, Rattlor's evil head strikes, tongue lasher whose evil tongue lashes. Me, I'm ready for him. But is he not ready for their King Hiss? When his skin comes off, his evil comes out. King Hiss, Tongue Lashor, and Rattler, new from the Masters of the Universe, each sold separately from Mattel. In 1985, Mattel came full circle and started marketing He-Man's twin sister to girls. You can pretend. Stealing powers where she sat. A very wild but pretty cat. That's Katra. And here's lovely Frosta. True blue friend of She-Ra. Dolls each sold separately. She-Ra had brushable hair and an array of friends with considerably more girly powers. Fortunately for boys, her enemies were a gruesome bunch named the Horde, who fit in perfectly with their existing He-Man collection. There'd be a brief resurgence in 1990 with the new adventures of He-Man, and then a more concerted effort in 2002. In 1988, Mattel signed an exceptionally lucrative deal with Disney to produce toys based on their licenses. This deal persists to this day and has been key in ensuring Mattel's market dominance. In 1989, during Back to the Future Part 2, Marty McFly acquires a hoverboard in 2015, ostensibly made by Mattel. Fans eagerly await the working model. In the meantime, Matty Collector made a non-functioning replica in 2012, available online only. In 1993, Mattel acquired Fisher-Price, one of the most trusted and beloved makers of baby and toddler toys in the world. In 1994, Mattel acquired Kransko and J.W. Spears & Sons, two relatively innocuous names, but ones which granted Mattel the rights to the Frisbee, the Hula Hoop, and Scrabble. In 1995, Mattel won the right to distribute Cabbage Patch Dolls. In that same year of 1995, Buzz Lightyear proved to be the hot toy that Christmas, flying off the shelves as Pixar's sleeper hit Toy Story surprisingly made kids want the toys. Mattel, however, were not the manufacturers despite their Disney deal. Instead, the license for this brand new character for this unassuming movie from a first-time studio went to Thinkway Toys. Interestingly, Mattel and Hasbro refused both Barbie and G.I. Joe respectively for this first Toy Story movie because the character Sid blew up what eventually had to be a combat Carl with a firecracker, and because Mattel believed that a little girl projects herself onto Barbie, and that animating her and giving her a voice would shatter this fragile dream. They soon changed their tune when the Buzz Lightyear demand hit, and Barbie was in the next two films. She was also in over 25 subsequent Mattel-produced CG animated movies. Mattel has since begun producing Toy Story toys. 
1996, Mattel gained the license to produce toys based on the many Nickelodeon TV shows. In 1997, as mentioned before, they acquired Tyco. This granted them a leading line of remote control cars, but also the coveted Sesame Street label. In 2000, Mattel won the rights to make the Harry Potter toys, which for well over the next decade would become enormous childhood favourites. That same year, they also sued the band Aqua for their song Barbie Girl, which depicted the character as an airheaded bimbo. The manufacturing titan lost the case in 2002. Also in 2002, they closed their last American factory and outsourced the remaining production to China. Sometime later, there was a scandal concerning the levels of lead in their toys. Once again in 2002, the Masters of the Universe line was relaunched with figures based on the designs laid down two decades earlier, but sculpted by industry hotshots The Four Horsemen. While they captured the fun and variety of the early line, there were just too many He-Man and Skeletor variants in hideous colour schemes that sat warming pegs. Also, 1982 was a completely different time and they had less competition. In 2002, they were up against dozens of action cartoon tie-ins, including their own lines. In 2007, they recalled over 18 million toys with exposed magnets that were deemed unsafe. These included Polly Pocket, Doggy Daycare, One Piece, and Batman Manga. In 2008, in conjunction with the San Diego Comic Con, Mattel launched a fan-focused direct order website named MattyCollector.com. Through this site, they sell the relaunched Masters of the Universe Classics line, made in loving tribute to the early 80s originals, as well as a continuation of their Justice League Unlimited line. As well as this, there are Ghostbusters figures based on the classic movies, Watchmen figures based on the comics, DC classics in the 6-inch scale, and lovingly recreated versions of beloved Mego action figures known as Retro Action DC Superheroes. And you can find out more about Matty Collector in a dedicated Masters of the Universe Classics video on Action Figure Resource. In 2010, Mattel acquired the license to produce figures based on WWE Wrestling that had previously been held by LJN, Hasbro, Toy Biz and Jack Pacific. And you can watch our dedicated Wrestling Figures video for more on that. Over the years, Mattel has also been part of many philanthropic endeavours, including the Red Cross and the UCLA Children's Hospital. They were included in Fortune magazine's list of top 100 companies to work for in 2013. Over 1,000 employees have been with the company for 15 years or more. Let's buy makeup so the boys will like us. Ugh. Don't you people see anything wrong with what Malibu Stacy says? Oh, there's something wrong with what my Stacy says. My spidey sense is tingling. Anybody call for a web slinger? In recent years, Mattel has experienced a slump in sales, particularly for Barbie, with units sold down 24% over the quarter. This can be attributed to a number of cultural reasons. The rise of interest in smartphones and tablets for younger children, and the debilitating effect that this has on their desire for actual physical toys, and the sales of Hot Wheels and Fisher-Price products have seen similar drops to reflect this. Also, the fact that Barbie is less of a model for aspiration now than she was in 1959. She hasn't really changed that much since the era that the TV show Mad Men is set, but America, the rest of the world, and particularly its women, absolutely have. This leaves Mattel in an interesting predicament. Stick to tradition and likely see sales fall further, or gamble on a complete overhaul of the line and what it represents and either revitalize or severely weaken the brand. Actionfigureresource.com Yesterday's Toys, Today's Treasures.